Torch. I'm reading Genesis 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the de deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be lights, and there were lights. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light in the day, and the darkness that he called night. And there was everything, evening, and the was morning, the first day. May God add a blessing to his world. world, world. Good morning, church. Um, today I'll be I'm reading Matthew chapter 5, 10, verse 10 through 11. Um, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Oh, that's wrong. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness of theirs in the king, is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. May be seated. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. I'd like everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes. Lord, I want to pray for everyone in our church. I pray that anyone that's going through something, that the Lord answers their prayers, please. Heal anybody that's in pain. Amen. I will turn it over to the praise team. Oh, come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, come on, come on and give God a good, good praise. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name.
am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? That you are thinking of me How you love me It's amazing I am a friend of God I am his friend Are you his friend? Oh, he calls me
greatly to be praised for our Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, let's worship God. Being just God all by himself. we realize what this day means to us. This is the day that our Lord and Savior actually triumphed on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to that cross for, for all of us. And that is this day. We're actually going to lay down all of our everything to celebrate you. Because God, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So God, we come this morning with a mind to praise you, a heart to worship you, because you've just been that good. We ask, oh God, to just search our hearts and our minds so that we can present our bodies living sacrifices unto you so that our praise is received, our worship is received, oh God. Because on this day, we got a reason, a right, and a responsibility to praise your name. Our Savior triumph, and they were screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna, it's on this morning. We're going to be celebrating saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for what you have done, hallelujah for what you are doing, and hallelujah for what you're getting ready to do. Go on and do what you're going to do in this place as our young people lead us in worship. Somebody needs something this morning. Allow this worship to be so, oh God, so somebody receives exactly what they came for. Somebody needs to be saved this morning. Somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody just, just, uh, just needs a little bit more oil. So today, oh God, fill our cup until it overflows. Little God, again, use our hands, use our feet, use our heart, use our total being to worship you. Because you indeed are worthy. Please, oh God, bless our young people as they lead us in worship this morning. Ease all nerves so that they can stand in their truth and be in their conviction to be able to do what you've assigned for them to do. Then, oh God, we ask you to take over this service. Bless the preach word. Bless the service in every dimension, oh God, so that you get glory and we get edified. Have your way now in this service. This service is yours. We decrease so that you can increase and do what you're going to do in this place. And we're excited and anticipating what you're going to do on this day. Because indeed, again, you are worthy of our praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. We say amen.
say it louder than that. Can we say hallelujah this morning? Amen. On this day, we're going to praise our God. Uh, we're going to start with selection number 10. We're going to see how much you're going to praise because we're going to say, oh, how I love Jesus. Selection number 10 this morning.
fight for a win. We're excited this morning. It's Palm Sunday, y'all. Oh, we got to do better than that. It's Palm Sunday, y'all. This is the day that our Savior triumphed into Jerusalem on his way to the cross for my sins and your sins. And we're so excited that it's you Sunday and we can celebrate that uh, on today. We actually want to have our welcome this morning. Uh, Malia going to bless us with our welcome this morning. Come on, Malia. And bless us with our welcome this morning. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Can anyone that is visiting please stand up? Amen. All of our friends and visitors, if you could just please stand for us. We just want to acknowledge you today. Amen. 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 On behalf of Pastor Jones and Mount Zion family, I welcome I welcome you all to Mount Zion's Baptist Church. Amen. Good job, Malaya. If you could just remain standing for us this morning, just give us your name, uh, your church home, and your pastor. We just want to know who you are on this morning and whom we are worshiping with. My name is uh, Frederick Bush. Just here visiting today. Amen. Amen. My name is Peyton Glover. Amen. 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 This is Frederick. My name is Pia. We're just visiting on this morning. Amen. Amen. We're delighted to have you all this morning. We are delighted to have you. Good morning. My name is Danielle Hogan. I'm visiting from Grace Church. Amen. Amen. Glad to have you, Sister Hogan. Glad to have you. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Mother. My name is Lottie Henry, and my home church is a Grace Episcopal Church in Alexander, Virginia. Amen. Amen. Glad to have you on this morning. Glad to have you on this morning. Good morning, my name is Linda Jackson. I'm visiting from First Mount Zion. Amen, amen, amen. We cousins, we cousins. Good morning, Brandon, visiting from New Life. Amen, amen, bless you, bless you, bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I'm visiting from Mount Olive Baptist Church, Woodbridge, Virginia, Pastor Ellis. Amen. Amen. So glad to have you this morning. So glad to have you this morning. And those who are online, we don't want to leave you out. If you want to share where you're visiting from and who your name is, I'm sure somebody online is going to be there to help and greet you as well. Because we are so excited, aren't we, Mount Zion, to have our visitors here with us. Amen. Amen. You could have went to any other church in Prince William County, but you decided to stop by this little country church that got some purple pews that don't mind actually celebrating God. And for that, we are so excited that you're worshiping with us even on today. So much so, so much so, that we're going to stand and just shake hands and just let you know how excited we are. If you can let those in at the door, Usher, before we stand, before we stand, before we stand, Usher, can you let those in at the door?
on, Bray. Read our announcements for us this morning, Bray. Good morning. Your announcements are, please play for the second shot in. Please join us. Oh. Please join Reverend Jack for noonday prayer each Thursday. Please note the conference number is in the bulletin. Please join Mount Zion's son and daughters for Bible study each Tuesday night at 7.30 via YouTube. Children's Church will present their annual Easter play today immediately after morning worship. If you are not receiving robocalls and texts from the church, please contact the church office. Please join us for Easter Sunday service at Mount Zion Baptist Church at 9.50 a.m. in person and on YouTube. Thank you. Cool. Great job, Bray. Great job, Bray. I, I used to hear. I, I used to hear uh, uh, the, the older or elders say that uh, prayer is the key to the kingdom, but it's faith that unlocks the door. Amen. We, we got a young man that wants to pray with us this morning. Amen. We're going to give him space to be able to pray. And as he prays, I challenge all of us to be able to pray as well. Right? And then I also, as he comes, want to make mention that right after morning service, right after morning service, uh, I, I, I know um, uh, Tyler Perry isn't here, but I think uh, his subjects are here. So, so you about to see uh, a magnificent play right after Sunday service by our children's church. So you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. So make sure you stay after for our children's church as they come. Amen. Amen. Come on, bless us, Brad. Come on, bless us. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> um took me a lot of heart and courage to, to do this, to come up here. Uh, today's a very special day for me. It's the death anniversary of my, of my grandmother that passed. She was very special to me. She, um, she was my heart. Yeah. But anyways, uh, um, let me write, uh, read this before um, we bow ahead and pray. Hi, my name is Locke Nguyen. I'm a member of Mount Zion Baptist Church, and we have the greatest pastor in the whole wide world. <laughs> I've, I've, been paying, I've been paying attention. I've been paying attention. <laughs> and uh, we're at church. We're at church. Everybody is uh, somebody. <laughs> um, uh, I got baptized by Pastor Jones a couple of years ago, okay. and ever since then, I gave my life to Jesus Christ and God. Yeah. And I, I, I've been staying in his word and staying in fellowship by going to the church every now and then. You see me here in a little corner, you know, <laughs> every, every week, every week, every Sunday. Every, not every Sunday, but I try. Yeah. Okay, um, can you turn off the light and bow our heads for prayer? Okay. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you for Mount Zion for giving me this opportunity to be here to say a little prayer I wrote, and I need to get off my chest, and this is for everyone here and for me and for you, God. Mm -hmm. Father God, I thank you for waking me up this morning and giving me the energy to wake up, to be here in the stand and use my voice with what you blessed me, me to tell everyone here is going to be okay. Times are going to get better. You have to put your trust in God first to see that God really does love you. 
Father God, I thank you for everyone here for coming inside your house, God, and worshiping you because you are a wonderful and joyful God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Father God, I thank you for you to, for keeping all of our family safe and healthy and stay with us through good and bad times. That's why we, we stay in prayer with you through either times, and we will pray night and day until you get back to us, Father God. Father God, thank you for blessing us with food and water to eat when we are hungry and thirsty and giving us all the necessary things that we want and need. Keep blessing us, Father God, and we keep washing you. Hallelujah. Father good, Father God, please keep, keep, keep us away from all the negativity things that are, are coming from this world and keep us safety from the trash, politics, and help us from the falling government, failing, failing government, and keep us safe from all the terrorists in this world. Father God, you are a wonderful, loving, and patient God. That's why we love you, and we will keep loving you and give you thanks at all times. We will love you and have patience with you and as well, because that's one of the hardest things to do, because we will try to work on it and wait for you, because you are worth it. Father God, I want you to bless everyone here at Mount Zion, and Pastor Jones, and everyone to stand, and especially the choir. It's so amazing and powerful. Sometimes I come to church so I can listen to the choir. Can I get a CD? <laughs> Anyways, Father God, thank you for every, everything you've done for us and our family and friends. We love you and don't forget about us, please. And we will pass down your words to our kids and children when they are ready. Please, please, please protect us, our kids and at school because the gun violence is just crazy. And most of the time, it's at some school and it's always got to be some kid at the school that has a grudge on the school or he was probably bullied to the extent that he has to do some terrible massacre like that. Father God, I hope you put some senses into him. If, the if, he, if he get the death penalty for killing too many innocent and harmless kids, I hope when the person dies, when he see you, I hope you do him right, Father God. My time is up now. We pray. Uh, I think we thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Our Father God, our Father in, our, uh, who are in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. <sighs> hallowed be uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass. And forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy is kingdom, the power, the glory, and forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
anybody know he's excellent? Come on here. Anybody know he's excellent? Come on, anybody know he's excellent? One more good time. Anybody know he's excellent? Can't nobody do me like you, know? Can't nobody give me what he gives me. Can't nobody take me where he takes me. him do some marvelous things. I know he's excellent. He keeps on doing it too. He, he ain't still in the grave. My God is alive and well. He's excellent. Thank, thank y'all so much for reminding us he is excellent. It's now time for our tithes and our offerings.
privilege of giving. We pray, Lord God, that nobody goes without for what they have given. And we thank you, God, again, for availing the opportunity. Now bless these tithes and bless these offerings as only you can. It's in your name, oh God, we pray. We say amen. opportunity to come before your people, Lord. You know I can't do anything without you. I ask you now, Lord, just to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And as I open up my mouth, Lord, you would give me the words to say. We love you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus is all the world to me. My life my joy, my all. 
He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Amen. I want to ask everyone to turn to um, John, the 12th chapter. John 12, and we're going to start at the 12th verse. The next day, a large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to him, Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here come the king riding on a young donkey. His disciples didn't understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the crowd met him, because they heard that he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see what, what um, you see we are not seceding at all. Look, the whole world is following him. Amen. Today we're going to talk about who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? And why should we celebrate him? Who is Jesus? And why should we celebrate him? Today we have what we call influencers. And many follow these influencers just because they are called influencers or just because they have a platform on social media. Generation Z or Gen Z use social media at 50% daily use rate. And its daily use can be used as a regular news source. The millenniums are close behind at 45%. And then the X Gen X, they're 35, and the baby boomers, 25. And we know the Gen X and baby boomers, they're on Facebook. So they, so they ha are highly influenced by what they see and what they hear on social media. And they take what is said, seen, and heard as their gospel. An influencer is someone in your niche or in industry with sway over a target audience. They have specialized knowledge, authority, or insight into a um, specific subject. And marketing experts use these influencers to help sell their product. In past, companies use celebrities and athletes to help sell their products through television or radio. Now, because of social media, we have other types of influencers that are immensely popular. Today, not only celebrities and, and athletes, but are also bloggers and content creators. And Gen Z purchases a large influence um, by social media. Some of the top black influencers are Jackie Aina for cosmetics, Marquise Brownlee into technology, Ray Bruce uh, for fashions, Patricia Bright with 2.82 million subscribers, Alonzo Leron with 3.9 million subscribers. Who are these people? And should they be celebrated? Besides telling me what to wear, what to eat, 
what makeup to use, and some techniques to use, what have they done for you? They have created a false sense of connectedness, poor social skills, and low self-esteem. Young people seek validation and approval from others and elevate these influencers to positions where they do not belong. But this morning I want to tell you about someone who is a savior, a deliverer, a healer, and a lover of your soul. He died for you. He's your advocate in heaven now with the Father, and he's advocating for you. His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, our King of kings. And he is worth being celebrated. Let me give you some overview and history of our scripture context. So Palm Sunday was the first day of the Holy Week, which concluded with Jesus' death and resurrection. It was a day of celebration. But some of those same people who shouted, Hosanna! The very next week, shouted, we have no king but Caesar. Now, Jesus initiated Palm Sunday to stir the good people up to action. To fulfill the scripture stated in Zechariah 9.9, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus also initiate this, initiated this celebration to offer himself as the Passover lamb. These event, events are recorded in all four Gospels. John 12, 12 to 19, our scripture lesson today John wrote this scripture to the devout Christians in his church and emphasized the validity of the scriptures. And he also wanted to let them know that Jesus was the promised Messiah. He did not bother to talk about how they obtained the cult, but pointed out that the Pharisees was concerned about how the whole world had gone after Jesus since his, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Then Matthew 21, 7 to 11, the author who emphasized to the Jews that Jesus, the son of David, is the Messiah. In his Palm Sunday scripture, he talked about all the cities being moved, all the city being moved in verse 10, and said the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Mark 11, 7 to 10 wrote this, is, wrote this like this, was a sermon. His, his scripture was written like a sermon to motivate and prompt a call to action to the common Greek who knew Christ. He was not concerned about all the details. He stated exactly what happened and nothing more. Now Mark, Matthew, and Luke explain how Jesus sent two disciples to get the cult and how they put their coats on, on the animal for Jesus to sit on. Now, Luke 19, 35 to 40, Luke, who wrote to the educated Greeks, who were a whole generation removed from the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, like our youth today, they wanted evidence of the validity of Jesus. It was in Luke's gospel that he talked about the Pharisees telling Jesus to tell your disciples to be quiet when they started rejoicing and praising God, saying, Blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. And you know what Jesus told them? If the Pharisees be quiet, then the very rocks will cry out. And I hope it's nobody here that want any rock crying for you. So Jesus allowed himself to be recognized as the king of Israel, because he is. And not just for Israel, but for all humanity. The people sang Hosanna, which means save now. They used this as a plea for Jesus to take action against the Roman government. 
They thought at this time Jesus came to save them from the authority of Rome. But he came to save them from the authority of sin and death. They sang while taking branches from the palm trees and laying them in the road. And said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. In Psalms 118, 25 and 26. Save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. They were celebrating the right person for the wrong reason. They had the right title, but the wrong season. The disciples didn't understand exactly what all this meant. Even after the resurrection, they asked him, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom now? Nevertheless, this was a celebration. A celebration involves people participating in a positive social activity in response to external stimuli. Sometimes there could be rituals in, in nature according to a calendar, or they could simply be motivated, motivated by a particular preceding event. And y'all know how we do, and you know how we are. It does not take much for us to celebrate. <laughs> oh, it stopped raining. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Pull out the chicken, the ribs, the potato salad, heat up the grill. Let's get it started. And today with social media, it takes nothing to get anyone together. And I had to um, use my consultants, my granddaughters, and ask them about this. It could be posted on social media. The spot or location is listed and it's on. It doesn't even matter whether you know everybody or not. Just call an Uber and let's, let's go. It's a celebration. But Jesus is someone to celebrate. So who is Jesus? Who is he? I'm glad you asked. I really don't have time to tell you all that he is because just as the song sings and the choir sings it, he's my everything. Jesus Christ. According to the Bible, Jesus Christ is the incarnate, given bodily form, word of God, the creator and savior of the world, the founder of Christianity, and the sinless example of his principles and practice. He's our example, y'all. And we should say, what would Jesus do? Jesus, his personal name is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Jeshu or Joshua, Jeshua or Joshua. And they have started a whole religion around Jeshua. And they don't know, we already know his name was Jeshua. In Matthew 1, 21, the name was divine, divinely appointed, for he will save his people from their sins. Since the name was common in his lifetime, he was usually referred to in a more specific way as Jesus of Nazareth. Christ the Anointed One is a title that acknowledged that he was ex the expected Messiah. In the gospel, Jesus is usually identified as the Christ. After Peter's sermon at Pentecost in Acts 2.38, he was usually referred to as Jesus Christ. So he, his first name is not Jesus, his last name is not Christ, but his name is Jesus the Christ. Jesus is our Savior. A name describes the person not just as a tag or a label. In keeping with this ancient tradition, Joseph was told by the angels that he should name his son Jesus because, as I said before, he was going to save his people from his sin. The name signifies two important aspects of our Lord and Savior. First, it means that he is Yahweh. Second, it means that he is the Savior. This is not our first, this is not his first name. It's his primary name. He is Jesus he is Yahweh, the Savior. The name uniquely expresses Jesus' work on earth to save and deliver. 
after Jesus was crucified for, um, for the sins of his people and raised from the dead, the early apostles proclaimed Jesus as the one and only Savior. Do you proclaim him now as your one and only Savior? I don't know how people live without him, I tell you. I can't. Well, I know the how. They don't hardly live, that's why. Acts 5.31, he did, he did God excellent. Him did God exalt with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remissions of sins. And we are witnesses of these things. And so the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to them, that obey him. Acts 13, 23, of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, brought unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Thereafter, the whole world eventually came to know the name Jesus as a name exalted by above all other names. Philippians 2, 9 to 11, wherefore also God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. He, is, he has redeemed us. Titus 2, 13 and 14. Look for the blessed hope and appearance of glory of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a people for his own possession, zealous of good works. So now he's our Savior. So how many people here know him as your personal Savior? <laughs> also, Jesus is our Lord, our Lord God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God. He is the same substance with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and equal in power and glory. Everything, therefore, that can be said of the Father and of the Holy Spirit can be said of the Son. He is the Creator. John 1, 1 to 3, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that had been made. He is our upholder and our sustainer of all things. Hebrews 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of by word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So he's our savior, he's our Lord God, and finally, he's our king. Biblical teachings that Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled the Old Testament promise of a perfect king and reign over his people and the universe. The Old Testament hope for the future included a vision of a new king like David, called the Anointed One, or the Messiah. 2 Samuel 7, 16, And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever. Before you, your throne shall be established forever. The prophet Isaiah intensified the promise and pointed to the Messiah. The big book of Daniel contains a vision of one who was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. All, one of all peoples, nations, languages, and who would serve. His dominion is everlasting and shall never pass away. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. So he's our savior, our God, and our king. His enemies being made subject to him and a new name given on his robe and on his thigh, his name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Revelations 19.16. In addition to Christ's present rule, his king's kingship will become fully evident in the future. We will see the understanding, we will see and understand this clearly when Jesus returns. 
The future kingdom will be essentially the same as the present rule in the sense that men and women will acknowledge Christ's rule in their hearts. It will differ, however, in that he rule, his rule will be perfect and visible. Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts it into all rule and all authority and power, for he, will, for he must rule till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Once manifested, the future kingdom will endure forever. Christ will rule over all things in heaven and on earth. And this time, God the Father will exalt Jesus, his son, to the highest place of authority and honor. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God, glory of God the Father. The question I need to ask today, is he your savior? Have you confessed with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life? Do you believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead? Is he the Lord of your life? Does he reign in your life? Are you waiting for his return as king of king and Lord of Lord? If the answer is yes to all three of the above, then there's nothing else for you to do but let's celebrate. Let's celebrate his life. Let's celebrate his death. Let's celebrate his resurrection. And let's celebrate because he's coming back. How many of you know he's coming back? But while we wait for him, let's celebrate. Let's praise him for what he's already done. Let's praise him for what he's going to do. Let's praise him for what he's doing right now in our life. Anybody here ready to celebrate? I know, I know him as a healer. I know him as a deliverer. I know him as a friend. I know him as somebody that has promised to never leave me or forsake me. I'm a witness to that. He's able. He's able to do whatever you need him to do. He'll lift you up. He'll turn you around. He'll plant your feet on solid ground. Anybody ready to celebrate him? Oh, he's worth being celebrated. Because I don't know about you, I called him in the midnight hour. I called him when I was down. I called him when I was depressed. And he answered me. And he delivered me. How many of you know that he's ready? You can celebrate him. He's worthy to be celebrated. He, he has never forsaken me. I know it's been times when I thought it was hard. I didn't have money. And I didn't know how I was going to take care of my kids. And somebody knocked on the door. They said, the Lord sent me. <laughs> and they brought me food and they brought me clothes. I don't know about you. It was time when I didn't have a job. And somebody called me out of the blue and said, I'm looking for this and I'm looking for that. Do you want to work? Anybody a witness here? Anybody a witness here where he never leave you or forsake you? Oh, he's my savior. I remember before I was saved and they, how they say you too mean to die and not fit to live. And then somebody told me about Jesus. Hallelujah. And I turned my life over to, I was, look, I was only 15 years old. So any young people here that think you're too young to get saved, that's not true. I was 15 years old when I got saved. I remember that a woman was having a revival at our church. And she was preaching. And she asked people to come up. Come up and get saved. And my mother gave me this holy nudge. She nudged me like this. And I walked up and I gave my life to the Lord. And guess what? He has never left me alone. I had backslide on him, but he never left me alone. He never left me alone. I remember I had stopped going to church. I, had stopped, I wasn't going to church no more. I was just not going. And my daughter, she was five years old. 
she came to me she said mom do you love God I said yeah I love God she said you don't go to church how many of you that was that was the Holy Spirit speaking to her and I got up and I went to church that next Sunday because he never lived, leave, left me alone so young people here you're not too young to be saved you can be saved today and old folks too you're not too old to get saved but today is the day because we have a savior in the house we have a deliverer in the house we have a healer in the house we have a way maker in the house i don't know what he is to you but i know what he's done to me and he's worthy to be celebrated Let's celebrate. I wonder, do anybody have anything out there to celebrate for? Have God ever done anything for you? The doors of the church are open. We're going to give you an opportunity to come now. Surrender your life to Him. Who's able to save you? Can you just imagine those people? were coming to Jerusalem and they was excited because they were looking for Jesus and all of a sudden they saw him coming not driving a Bentley but he came down that road on somebody else's ass amen and I want you to know that that same Jesus who came to Jerusalem that day is right here now He'll save you. He'll give you a, another chance. He will turn your life around. Like the old people used to say, he'll turn your life upside down. If you're here today, this is your opportunity. Come to Jesus now. Do we have one? Oh, he's worth it, he's worth it. 
She asked the question, she said, who is Jesus? And then she said, why should we celebrate? Now that's a personal question. They can't nobody answer that question but you. Do you have anything to celebrate Christ for? Look back all your life and have he brought you some dangerous situation? Yes, I don't know about you, but I can't speak for you. But I can speak for myself. Oh, I have so much to celebrate. Yeah. We want to remember Sister Elna McCollett. Uh, her son transitioned and he lives in Germany. So mm. let's keep Sister McCoy in our prayer. And also I ask that you keep mine. My sister in her prayer, she lost her husband this morning. And uh, we're going to lift him up in our prayers. Amen? Amen. I was just sitting thinking, I said, 63 years, I have delivered a Palm Sunday message. And you know what? I haven't missed a Sunday out of the 63. Don't you think there's something to celebrate? I have so much to celebrate. We want to thank God for that message this morning. Reverend Meacham, may God bless you. May God pour back into you. Now, young people, Immediately after the church, we're going to stay back for a few minutes for us. Young people have a, a play that they want to display today. And certainly it would break their little hearts if we didn't stay back. Amen. Sacrifice a few minutes just to stay back for our young people. And let them know that we as old people appreciate them. And we want them to know that they are our future. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Thank our young people for singing this morning. And even those who ushered as well. We glorify you today. May God bless you. With all minds declare we're ready to go home. Amen. Well, what we'll do, we'll just dismiss. And we won't go home right now. But we'll stay back for the evening service. Amen. All right, let's stand. We want to pray for those members of our church who are sick, who are bereaved, those who have lost loved ones. We want to lift them up. But truly we know that God is able. But those same people today was rejoicing. But then on the other hand, that same crowd said, crucify him. And I don't know him. God, we pray that thou art none here like that. For we love him today and we're going to love him tomorrow. We're going to continue to love him because he's all we have. And he's all we need. He's water when we're thirsty. He's bread when we're hungry. He's joy when we're sick. He'll lift our burden. God, I pray for Sister McCoy today. Pray, God, that you'd bless her, that you'd lift up her spirit. Let her know that she's in the United States and her son is in Germany. 
But the same God that is in the United States is the same God who is in Germany. God, I know you are able to do that. God, I pray for my sister today. Lift her. Give her strength. Give her courage. Let her know to be absent from the body is to be present with her. Jack is no more in pain. Jack is no more suffering. But Jack is with the Lord now. We pray, Father that you would let her know that she's going to make it because the Lord is on her side. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. We love you, God. We honor you, and we give your name the glory. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And now may the grace of God, our Father, sweet communion, fellowship, of the divine spirit be with us now and forevermore let us all say amen